All right, what is this? Dev Workshop, Komei and the Five Fates, New Player Experience and Quality of Life. Okay, Warframe has introduced more than 10 years of systems and mechanics, leaving players with a variety of content to explore. For players who are just starting their Warframe journey, this depth can be overwhelming. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. Causing many to rely on community tutorials and friendly neighborhood Tenno in Q&A chat. Maybe. Uh, we've made efforts to improve new players onboarding over the years, but 2024 has seen a concerted effort on this front especially. Good. Good, dude. That's so good. Quest changes. When selecting your starter Warframe in the Awakening Quest, stats will no longer be displayed by default in an on-hover ability descriptions. These stats have been moved to a separate tab in this on-hover pop-up. Okay. This change in is part of an ongoing effort to evaluate the critical information for new players while reducing... Uh, extraneous details that could lead to information overload. Yeah, that's a big deal, man. A lot of people get turned off, and honestly, a lot of people get scared of games, especially when they just throw a bunch of stuff at them, right? A bunch of information. Especially because most people who don't just go out of their way and learn about Warframe on their own, which is the minority, I'm sure, but the majority of people hear about Warframe from a content creator or a person in their IRL, whatever it is, you know, and most people are going to tell you that it's a big game. There's a lot to do, and it can be pretty complex, right? It's the same thing as, like, Path of Exile. So this is good. This is really good. I think the reasoning here is pretty solid, too. Reduce the hacking puzzle speed in Awakening and Vor's Prize. Since players are learning how to use Grenier hacking consoles for the first time, this change allows them to get used to the mechanic without feeling too punishing or overwhelming. I think this one's kind of whatever, but it makes sense for sure. I understand why they're doing this. All right, incubating your first Kubro and Howl of the Kubro now only takes 60 seconds instead of 48 hours. Many quest crafting requirements were reduced across the board with Dante Unbound earlier this year. Now Howl of the Kubro also meets the standard. I think that's a really good standard. I think that's a really good way to look at it. The ideal new player experience, man, reduces most friction to get into the game. Now, it doesn't mean you need to, like, handhold or make everything super simple but it needs to be readable and understand understandable at like an early level right at a really small and low level because new players don't understand shit about the game they don't know anything about the game so they need to be able to just read it and go okay yeah sure that makes sense right okay new player quality of life changes unknown mods viewed in the codex will now show their full descriptions and drop locations currently undiscovered mods show the mods name and question mark question mark next to it in lieu of their description Players who were interested in these mods would have to go to the external sources to learn more about them. With Komei's launch, they can read their description and drop location in the codex, regardless of ownership. This is also pretty incredible, to be honest. I think this is a really good change. It just, uh, again, it just stops people from having to tab out and go find another source of information. And what that does is it kind of just leads the player to never trust with the what the game tells you, to be honest, because you get told this all the time, especially now with Warframe. You get a lot of these content creators that go, this says this, but don't believe it because it actually works like this, right? Like there's just a lot of descriptions that are inaccurate or they just simply don't give enough information. So they kind of they kind of got to go back and do what they're doing here, which is give, give people a reason to kind of trust what's going on and trust whatever the game says. Okay, selling an unmastered item from your inventory will now be displayed as a pop-up message recommending them to rank it to level 30 or le level 40 for over-leveled equipment like the Parasesis before attempting to sell it. Good! That's actually really good. And I, I haven't done this myself. Yeah, this is good because, again, I haven't done this much. But from what I understand, this is something huge in the community where people have sold items that are like, what, level 29 or or maybe like 39. Which I don't really think that... Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think a lot of people are selling items that level up to level 40. Um, I don't know. Maybe if they've got like too many of a Kubo weapon or whatever. I don't know. There are other ways to get rid of that, right? Or to use it, rather. But this is good, man. That's good overall. Still think they should give new players like one sped up Warframe in case they don't like it by choice instead of having to wait three days. I agree 100%. Yeah, I agree. Now, I will say the only problem with doing something like that, it, which I, I agree with the premise, but the only problem is, you know what? There isn't a problem with that. Yep, good idea, actually. I think it's good. If a piece of equipment in a player's loadout has 10 plus unused mods capa or mod capacity and unused mod slot, a warning symbol will appear next to the loadout section of the navigation screen. This only applies to weapons with 10 to 30 unused mod capacity or 10 to 40 lich sister weapons and will not appear if you are mastery rank 30 or higher equipment player loadout. 
Is it like a warning symbol just kind of telling them that they need to put more mods on? I think that's what that is. I mean, that's cool. I think it's a good idea. It doesn't do that now, does it? No. No, it doesn't. Because these are empty. These are empty right here. That's awesome, dude. That's actually so cool. Wait, did I skip one? I did. Unlocking an ability will now show the input needed to cast the ability. Unlocked pop-up. Good. Press 2. Sick. Yeah. New Tenno who rank up their uh, Warframes have very little context for what Radio Blind means without venturing into the ability screen. But now they will be redirected to test out these unlocks uh, on the input screen. Yeah, that's sick. Good. Yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. Is it going to tell you what it does, though? This change applies to all uh, all players regardless of mastery ranks. Everyone should benefit from the quality of life change from ranking up new Warframes. Good. Yeah, that's really good. Input needed. It's just the input. Well, wait. Well, it's... Yeah, that's good. I mean, maybe it should have, like, a, a, a very concise description. Like, underneath, it should say something like, lower enemy defenses. You know, for, like, Thero Strike, which is the right one, right? That's that's my two, I think. Yeah, that's my two. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, that's a good idea, though. Wait, not included in the screenshot below? MR5 players will see empty mods pop up? Okay, so somebody's MR5 or below MR5, they're going to see something that says empty mods. Okay, that's cool. Good. All right, open landscape maps now have a feature or now feature a legend for the advanced map view. New icons for the extraction points. See this Fortuna and the Necrolist. Open landscapes operate differently from normal Warframe missions, which can be hard for new players to grasp at first. Seiya's Vigil has received changes to reinforce the enter and exit through the Cedius Doors mechanics, and in a, uh, this addition expands upon that goal. I think this is sick. It's really simple, but it's really good. It's just something that should have been there for a, you know for a long time. This like this here is is nice. Maybe it should have been there, but this one's this one definitely should have been. This one definitely should have been, and this one should have been. But it's good that we're getting them too, right? Like I'm not shitting on them for not having. It's just good to see. Fish resource descriptions have been updated to indicate where the players can find the fish that the resource is earned from. Uh, fish descriptions accessed via chat linking have also been updated to list their relevant information to secure the catch. That's really good as well. Really good. Trying to make a new, more new player friendly? Yeah, it's a good thing, man. Warframe is in desperate need. Desperate need. I'm telling you, it's like the only thing outside of like anime characters that just make a lot of new players, especially players that are new to the genre, who may choose like TFD at first over Warframe. You know, just because that new player experience just has so much friction in it right now, it's already so confusing. So little stuff like this, as long as I keep doing it in a kind of compound these these changes and they just keep doing more and they do more like every every few months maybe every year from what little i understand about de hopefully it's a little bit more frequently this will all add up to make a really wonderful new player experience general quality of life changes in addition to our new player experience changes Kome brings a bevy of general improvements that apply to all tenno uh, number one is void relics now display owned and crafted status of their possible rewards okay so this one, this one's crafted and this one's owned. Which is which? Players can now easily see crafted or owned status from items in the relics when viewed in the relic selection screen and on hover as mission rewards. This functionality also applies to the relic reward selection screen upon successfully cracking a relic. Perfect. Good. All right, I, I don't know which is which. I think this one, it's like the foundry icon, right? Right. I think this is like we have crafted it and this one's like we own it or something. Yeah. Finally, they needed that. This is something that should have been in the game as well. But yeah, I'm really just happy they're adding to this. Absolutely, man. Okay, number two is Tenno can now favorite equipment in their arsenal. This is probably, like, for me, man, this is good. This is so good. I was wondering about this, and it's so weird that you currently can't do this. It's so annoying. Like, for I know for long-term players, it's probably not that big of a deal. It's probably, it might not, yeah, ignore, ignore this, okay? Ignore this. But, um, <laughs> yeah, from what I, dude, I don't know, man, like, from my experience, I tried to do this so many times because it's so annoying, dude. When you look at a weapon, you're like, I'm going to try to level up this weapon, and then you really like the weapon, and then you go to use said weapon. It's like, how are you going to sort in the arsenal in a way that's going to show you this weapon consistently? Because right now, there isn't a way to do that, right? Unless maybe you format it a little bit more than all of the other weapons you may have tried in the last months or years you play this game whatever it is you know oh my god that's so good and you know what's even better this is kind of random right it's, it's a little random but i'm so glad that favorites are going to show up at the top of this menu instead of doing what they do with the color palettes which is 
create another tab. Color palettes, this actually makes sense, right? This actually makes sense because it's not a, a select and equip. This makes sense, but it would be really dumb if they did it with this. So this makes sense. Yeah, just put all the all at the top. Hell yeah, dude. Oh my god, that's so good. All right, what's the next one? What's the next one? Number three, the Fusion screen has received a fresh brush to simplify UI elements and bring the Fused mod to, re uh, to the floor. Yeah, this looks good. It's very simple, but this looks sexy. It's clean. It does the point. Okay. Hold. Wait, hold to Fuse? Okay, players can now also... Yes. Dude, being able to upgrade right in the, in the build craft screen is going to be so good. Something that's kind of annoying is like getting the build ready. You're like, all right, hold on. Let me... Let me find it real fast. Like, this isn't that big of a deal, but it's just more that you can do in the same screen, man. It's good. All right, number four. Settings that are not set to default are now marked with a diamond indicator in the... Dude, they didn't have to do this one at all. You know how many games do not do this? This is good. Holy shit. Because there are so many settings in this game. There are so many settings in this game. I go through these and I just go, which ones did I change again? Fuck. What was it? That's nice, man. That's so clean. I like this. Yeah, if you want to reset a particular setting to default, you can interact with that indicator to do so. Oh, that's even better. So you can just click the thing and then put the one setting to default without accident or like without doing like the reset all. I can't tell you guys how many times I have messed with settings in any program or game. I change a bunch and then I realize that all of it's wrong, but I don't want to reset all the other settings that I've done because I'm only trying to narrow it down to a few. So like just clicking those things, really good. That's actually really, really ingenious, man. All right, number five, purchasing arcanes from a vendor now displays how many arcanes you own per rank. That's actually really nice. This is very cool. I haven't encountered this as like as an as in like an issue for me, but I think I think for a lot of people who are doing the arcane grind or the boss for a grind, this is going to be really convenient. It's not that big of a deal, but this is this is really nice. Uh, each fill down represents one rank. Sure. Okay. All right. Looking forward, here it is. If you've offered advice to new players, ask questions about the new about the new next in the game. Sure. Feedback in our forums. Write it off stream. You may first and for Warframe. You help with the further player experience. There's still room for improvements. Let's look at some of the changes we're working on that won't make it for Kome. Improved quest. Or improving quest menu in the codex clearly distinguished story, warframe, and side quest. This is good. This is really good. It's just kind of weird, like when you see them all together, because even I don't even know like which is which. I have no idea. I'm playing this game for five months. I just look at it and I go, is this important? I don't know. Like I did your rallies and I thought it was a big deal, and then it was cool, but it wasn't like a main quest, you know? A lot of convenient, nice touches. Glad they're doing it now. I am so glad. Like you guys don't even understand. Like from from my perspective, and I hope I'm, I'm sure it's very similar for a lot of new players, or at least people that started in the last few months, man. But this game desperately needs it because it has so much content in it that is so good and so rich. Generally, uh, most of the time, 99% of the time, that all it needs is just to reduce the friction for other people, and they can they you just get more people in the game, dude. Like it, this game is. This game is alive, okay? This game is so alive, it's stupid. It's stupid. I'm pretty sure it's like number 11 or something. Where is it? Warframe. Right now it's at 32,000, right? I mean, the daily high peak players is 68. Like, this game is living. It just needs more people because it, it deserves more people. And I think it would attract a lot more people if it wasn't such a pain in the ass. And if 9 out of 10 in new player videos on YouTube didn't say the uh, new player experience was shit, right? So this is going to help. Founders, try not to reply to the forum post. Challenge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course, right? It's like, uh, it's like a right from them, right? It's a right for them. They have the right to do so, man. All right, adding small narrative introductions to planets and their assassination targets as players move through the star chart. This is also really good because nothing's more strange in a game than when you're doing something simply because the game is telling you. Now, it's different when the game tells you to do it and then they give you backstory. Like, hey, by the way, Boar's a piece of shit. You should probably want to kill him. You know what I mean? And give a little bit of backstory on Like, tell us what's going on. More so than what, you know, the way it's already done is kind of weird. Like, a lot of people just, they don't really know what's going on. You can kind of tell by the in-game dialogue, but I think stuff like this is going to be really good. The planets, too. The planets, uh, I want to know what this is like. Are there further adjustment to the Awakening, Vor's Prize, another early in-game quest? Okay. Curating our loading screen tips to player progression. Good. Players during Vor's Prize will see, or only see tips focused on beginner controls and mechanics okay that makes sense 
Yeah, and then once they're done with it, or like even after like MR5, maybe they'll see less of those and they'll see like more lore oriented things. That would make sense. Yeah. Vor is a certified yapper. All the Yora, <laughs> all the lore you need. Yeah. Uh, players during Vor Prime only see Pokemon. Yeah, okay. This is only a small snippet of what our team has been discussing, but we don't want to overpromise. Should you wish to provide us with feedback on how to improve our new player experience, we've added a dedicated new player experience sub forum to our feedback forums. Okay. Yeah, all right. Well, that's it for that. Okay. Yeah, what do you guys got going on? What do you guys do?